Welcome to Middlesex Moments, the news and information program produced by faculty, staff, and students at Middlesex Community College. I'm Stephen Minkler, Academic Dean and Lead Campus Administrator at the college, and your host for these programs. As always, Middlesex Moments comes to you from the radio and television studios in the Center for New Media, located on the main campus of Middlesex Community College in Middletown. The purpose of Middlesex Moments is to give you a small glimpse into the programs and services offered by Middlesex Community College. You'll meet faculty, staff, and students, and you'll learn about the ways in which the college partners with businesses, agencies, schools, and individuals to create a stronger community for those whom we serve. And today I'm delighted to introduce you to Robin Gilmartin and Diane Mack, who are friends of the college, very good friends, and uh, thank you for being with me today. Thanks, Thanks so much Steve. for having us. Sure. Yeah. And uh, Robin, maybe if you can help tell our listeners how the two of you first got started in connecting with Middlesex Community College. Sure. I think it was about 10, eight, eight, 10 years ago, um, I got to know Peter Galgano, uh, who is um, instrumental on your campus and heads up the, uh, the Oasis Center and working with veterans. And um, I, I am retired from the VA, uh, VA Healthcare in um, Connecticut. And uh, s um, Peter and I had a, a lot of interaction, I guess, over the years uh, in helping veterans uh, find their way to campus. Um, and uh, he made a trip out to um, uh, the Newington VA a couple of times too. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah. Well, and you've also been uh, actually uh, generous contributors to the Middlesex Community College Foundation uh, by way of, inter you know, being connected with Peter and some of the students here at the college. Yeah, that um, the uh, there was a, a wonderful World War II uh, veteran POW um, named Daryl Stark, and uh, Daryl's he passed away uh, a couple of years ago, and Daryl's family uh, wanted to start a scholarship, so I was. Uh, part of part of that, I knew Daryl for many years, um, and um, Diane and I just really believe in community college education and the accessibility of it, and we are big fans of of you know what you do at Middlesex. Yeah, we've been so impressed with the programs and the the staff here. Um, it um, led us to really thinking about how we could support the college and the students here. And so we've been making um, contributions periodically to the Line of Hope Fund. Mm -hmm. And that's been very rewarding for us and I hope for the students. Okay. And um, Robin, you had said you had worked in the VA as a, as a counselor? Um, I was, uh, uh, when I left the VA, which was, oh gosh, about four years ago, I um, had been um, clinical director of the PTSD residential program. Uh, in, at the Newington VA, and um, I had about uh, 18 and a half years, I guess, total with the VA, yeah. Okay, and uh, Diane, are you also retired? My, uh, I retired uh, five years ago from a career as an attorney, primarily in the insurance industry. Okay, so a lot of connections with healthcare and supporting students at colleges and, and making sure that they are prepared to move on. Mm -hmm. Well, we do have to take a quick break. Uh, when we come back, more with Robin Gilmartin and Diane Mack. As we talk about April being National Donate Life Month, we'll learn about Robin and Diane's personal stories as being organ donors themselves. And you'll learn how you can become an organ donor to benefit either a family member or someone completely anonymous to you uh, to really give this special gift of life, uh, paying it forward in a big way. You're listening to Middlesex Moments, coming to you from Middlesex Community College. Please stay tuned. Welcome back to Middlesex Moments, coming to you from Middlesex Community College. This is Steve Minkler, together with my guests Robin Gilmartin and Diane Mack. We've been talking about April as National Donate Life Month, and both Robin and Diane themselves um, are organ donors and have a very touching personal story to share. Robin, how did you and Diane first become particularly interested in becoming organ donors? Well, the, um, many people are familiar with, um, uh, you know, signing up at the DMV for, um, uh, you know, to donate organs and tissues, um, you know, in the event of accident or, you know, and in, in, in other words, um, the organs or, t or tissues are taken after uh, death. 
Um, but there's also a, um, what's called living donation, and um, that um, is a process people probably know less about, um, and Diane and I um, actually didn't know much about that until a few years ago when we read a story in the Hartford Current. Um, it's a woman um, named Patricia Mino Coveney who donated a kidney um, in March of 2015, and um, the donation was, uh, she donated a kidney to uh, anyone who needed the kidney and who was a match for her. So it's what's known as a non-directed or altruistic um, donation. And we read the story um, in the, on the front page of the Hartford Current and we were so uh, moved by it. Um, there's, there's another aspect to, to um, the non-directed donor um, um, uh, idea, which is that um, because Patricia uh, donated uh, to anyone in need, what that meant was that um, the, the man she donated to, his loved one who was not a family member, who was not a match for him, was then able to donate to another uh, individual whose wife was not a match for him and mm -hmm. so forth and so on. And that resulted in, a, I believe that was a, an eight-person chain. Uh, might have been ten, but I think it was eight. So there were four donors, four recipients. But Patricia um, essentially kick, kicked off the chain. So it was, um, we, we had never really thought about living donation. We had never thought, of, we, you know, thought about, um, uh, you know, being able to, to donate in, to someone in need. So we learned a little bit about the process from that, uh, from that article and then contacted uh, Yale, New Haven. Mm -hmm. Right. And at the time, I, there were pictures of the... Uh, the kidney donors and recipients on in the uh, Hartford Current article, and I was struck by the fact that uh, the the lead donor there was probably someone my age, and I hadn't really thought that at age 60 plus I would be a, a likely candidate to be an organ donor. I wondered if you were going to say <laughs> your age, <laughs> <laughs> but I but I you know wanted to pursue it and put a call into Yale New Haven and talked to one of the uh, transplant coordinators there, and she said, well, if you're in good health, age is not a restriction, why don't you come down and mm -hmm. start the testing process, which I did. And um, after uh, a series of tests, um, very thorough tests, um, it was determined that I would be a candidate to donate an, or an organ, a kidney in particular, and. Um, I was delighted at that news and uh, actually did donate a kidney in November of 2015. Mm -hmm. and, and how did your, what part of the chain were you in in that donation process? Well, I, you know, as Robin indicated, I was what's called a non-directed donor. And at the time, um, we did look at the possibility of having a, a series of donations as part of a chain but it would have taken more time and I decided to just donate to whoever was next on the list mm -hmm. at Yale and ended up donating to uh, a man who had been on dialysis for seven years um, and that uh, was really uh, a very smooth um, uh, surgery. Um, he's doing well as far as I know um, and for me, the recovery was really um, remarkably smooth. Mm -hmm. um, so, so Diane donated first in, in 2015, and I kind of had a, a front row seat to that uh, in the you know the waiting room, and and you know while she was um, re recovering, it, it's which we can talk more about that. It's a it's a short and relatively easy recovery. Um, but what became apparent to, to both of us is just how miraculous this is. So when this, the surgeon took Diane's left kidney, they took the, the, the kidney next door 
um, to her recipient who was, was open. Um, it, the surgery took about 40, 45 minutes for Diane. It's this is a laparoscopic, a laparoscopic surgery, mm -hmm. I should say. They take the kidney next door. They, um, excuse the medical language, but they hook it up, <laughs> however <laughs> they do that. And um, what the surgeon said when he came to tell me, you know, everything, of course, went smoothly was that, that it kind of the, right away when they, when they hooked up the kidney, it's, it started producing urine. Amazing. I mean, it just, it, it, it is the most incredible thing. Um, so people who, recipients uh, of, of new kidneys, a, a new kidney, uh, feel better within hours. Um, and uh, continue to get better, and it's just a kind of a miraculous thing. Sure. Uh, yeah, yeah. And this is Middlesex Moments. I'm Steve Minkler speaking with Robin Gilmartin and Diane Mack about organ donation, and particularly April is National Donate Life Month. And uh, you know, Diane, after going through that experience of of uh, the donation of your kidney, I think it, it makes me pause to think that what a special act that is but you don't need to be a particularly special person meaning that you no. you know as long as you're in good health and mm -hmm. that you mm -hmm. can appreciate the fact that you're giving life and extending life to someone else it's it is a special act but you don't need to be a special person absolutely and really i i was surprised at how as i said how how easy the recovery was um you know, for a period of time, um, you have to be careful about things like lifting. But I was driving within a week um, back to my normal routine, um, certainly within four weeks. Um, so, um, and I feel great. Uh, and it's something that I'm, I'm, I'm so glad that I did. I mean, it's so wonderful to be able to feel that you've, if not saved a life, certainly changed someone's life um, by um, enabling them to stop dialysis and get back to a, a normal, regular life, um, mm -hmm. a healthy life. Sure. Diane, the reason that um, somebody does need a kidney donated to them is, is it typically uh, from uh, the result of disease or uh, some other issue that it's happened with their own health? Yes. Uh, apparently, there are approximately 30 million adults in America that have chronic kidney disease. In most cases, this is a result of either diabetes or high blood pressure. Um, and in America, there are 115,000 people awaiting organ transplants. 82% of these people are waiting for a kidney. So, you know, in hearing these statistics, um, we um, are certainly happy that we um, made the decision to donate a kidney, but we also felt it was important for us to talk to people and spread the word about the need for living organ donation in particular. Um, every day, 22 people are dying in America waiting for an organ transplant. Um, and so when someone makes a decision and is able to donate uh, something like a kidney, not only are you helping to save that person's life, but it enables somebody else on that waiting list to move up and get an organ faster. Yeah. That, that list is, is uh, people waiting is, is growing all the time, e even, even though... Uh, every year, a number of people sort of drop off the list because th it, they die or they become too sick um, to go through the uh, the transplant process. Um, in Connecticut, and I, I don't have the most recent statistics. This would be from last year. Um, th there are two two centers um, at Yale and Hartford Hospital that that do kidney transplants. Um, at, at Yale last year, there were 800 people. So this is 800 people, mostly from Connecticut, that are that are uh, awaiting a donor. And Hartford Hospital is, is somewhat less. I think it's about 300. Um, so these are our our fellow um, citizens, our neighbors, um, mm -hmm. and um, many people probably listening have a family member who has, or they themselves have. Um, kidney issues, um, 
And um, if you've ever been through dialysis or know somebody who has been dialysized, it's, um, it is uh, quite a, a difficult um, process and, and way to live, really, mm -hmm. because it's um, typically three times a week for, for two hours, um, having all the blood in your body remo removed, cleansed, and, and returned. And um, they're all kind of health issues and dietary restrictions, and you don't feel good. Um, when I worked at the VA um, early on in, in my career, I saw a Korean War veteran who uh, was under uh, uh, on dialysis, and I would often meet with him while he was um, uh, going through dialysis and got to know his family and just how they were impacted. He, he passed away. Um, but you know, I saw the, the his hands would would fold up and cramping, and mm -hmm. had a lot of pain, and wasn't able to just go to the um, kitchen and get a glass of water anytime he wanted. All the fluid had to be carefully, uh, the intake had to be carefully um, monitored. Um, so it's just it's a very it's very difficult. So. Um, the having having seen close close up um, someone go through dialysis and, and having donated a kidney, I can say with certainty I would uh, donate a kidney any day rather than go through a dialysis myself for one week. Uh, it's it, it 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 is that much simpler than going through dialysis. So. Um, it's just it's just something to consider. The um, recovery time is really pretty quick, and it 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 sure does feel good to be able to uh, to to give the gift of life. Absolutely. Well, I, I thank you both for sharing your personal stories of organ donation, and and um, after a quick break, we'll talk more about National Donate Life Month during the month of April and how you can become an organ donor yourself. You're listening to Middlesex Moments from Middlesex Community College. Please stay tuned. Welcome back to Middlesex Moments, coming to you from Middlesex Community College. This is Steve Minkler with my guests, Robin Gilmartin and Diane Mack. And we've been talking about organ donation, particularly living organ donation, uh, and how uh, both Diane and Robin have donated their kidneys to other individuals. And uh, Robin, you actually were able to meet and stay in touch with the person you donated your kidney to. Yeah, which has been r really wonderful. Her name is Patty. We're roughly the same age. I'm 62. I think she's a year, year younger or older. And um, she had um, uh, polycystic kidney disease th since her 20s and um, uh, so was just about to go on dialysis. Um, anyway, uh, post-transplant, post, uh, um, Patty has um, has sort of um, gotten <laughs> she, a new lease on she, a life. A new lease yeah. on life. She <laughs> said she feels better than she um, that, than she has since her twenties, <laughs> and um, I it's it's really um, heartening because I every month or so I get um, an email um, a, about uh, her times and um, uh, running five k races, <laughs> and uh, so she she's she's doing really well. I've met uh, Diane and I both met her her family, and it's just you know it's just a nice warm relationship. Yeah. Right. Well, and I imagine that's had a transformational effect on your own lives, knowing that. Well, in this case, you know her from staying in contact yeah. and and Diane you didn't actually get to meet your recipient but but just how transformational that is to both of you to know that you've helped yeah. improve and, and extend the quality of life for somebody else Ab absolutely there you know there there are many many decisions in in life that you know y you question uh, should I've done this or that or th this is this is one of those decisions that um, uh, it just uh, it just it feels so great and um, y initially when Diane donated and later when I did we just kept looking at each other going wow can you believe they we did that, we did that. <laughs> and and it, and it worked I mean it's just, like yeah. it's, kind of, it's just it, 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 we marvel at the um, the the whole transplant uh, team oh, and the, the medicine amazing, behind this amazing medicine yeah yeah, yeah they're and just such wonderful. caring supportive people 
through the whole process, you really felt you had the best team in the world behind you at mm-hmm. Yale anyway. Mm-hmm. I'm sure at Hartford Hospital it's same the same. thing. Yeah. 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 Fantastic. Now, if someone listening today were interested and maybe motivated and inspired to become an organ donor, how does that happen? Wh- how, what do they need to do to, mm-hmm. um, to register to do that? Well, certainly if they're interested in becoming a living o- organ donor, um, getting in touch with either Yale or Hartford Hospital, their transplant centers, would be the way to go. And they would talk you through the process and then if you're a good candidate, put you through a series of tests that will confirm whether or not you're able to safely proceed to become an organ donor. But for the rest of us that are not ready to take that big step, um, registering to become uh, an organ donor through the Department of Motor Vehicles is certainly the way to go. And this would enable you to save a life after you have ended your life um, mm-hmm. through organ donation. Mm-hmm. And that, that um, I- includes um, tissues, um, retinas, um, uh, ki- all, all organs. Uh, mm-hmm. We have a close friend who's a recipient um, uh, of a new heart of, uh, three years ago, I believe, and do- she's doing very well. Um, and that, that was a gift um, of life to her from um, a young man who lost his life and um, in an automobile mm-hmm, accident. Mm-hmm. So um, actually uh, April is Donate Life Month um, and we will, Diane and, I, Diane and I will be on campus um, April 19th in front of the cafeteria uh, from 11 to 1, and we will be uh, signing people up as organ donors uh, through, through you know, DMV. Um, it we'll be registering people uh, on site and... Um, answering questions. Answering mm-hmm. questions. Um, so, and, and, and we might also say that uh, it, it, this will take a, a, a few minutes of your time, anyone who's interested and not already registered, um, and we'll be giving out... Um, Four dollar vouchers for the cafeteria Very nice. uh, for you to use in your beverage or uh, item of your choice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, I was in going to uh, the website for the National Donate Life Month. I was really inspired by the fact that they took upon themselves to to think about Maya Angelou and her quote, uh, "Be a rainbow in someone else's cloud," and that's been sort of their guiding. Mm-hmm philosophy uh, or at least their gu- their guiding touch point uh, for now and I think you know your experiences really show that that kind of bears out in, in reality mm. yeah. earlier we were talking about how oftentimes um, an organ donation is part of a chain of events or a chain of people and sometimes that chain is caused by the fact that members of a, of a specific family may not be a match for a recipient and and how does that play out in in the, mm-hmm. the organ donation? system. Okay. Um, I- that, that happens um, frequently that uh, a friend or family member who would like to donate uh, to their loved one who's um, in need of, a, of an organ, they're not a match. And um, uh, that, that then can lead to what's known as a paired exchange, um, wh- whereby somebody like me or Diane or any, anyone else who uh, donates it may match this individual uh, who's waiting for a, an organ, and then their loved one who is uh, doesn't happen to be a match then agrees to donate to uh, an individual um, uh, who is waiting f- for an organ who um, uh, with whom they match. So it's a it's a really beautiful system um, to help maximize the number of of individuals who who get the organ and. Um, it's kind of interesting that the man who developed the complex algorithm for matching uh, donor to recipients uh, in these paired matches or exchanges, he um, actually won the Nobel Prize. Oh. It's, a, uh, it, it's kind of an amazing thing that's helped open up uh, donations. Okay. If I asked each of you to you know, give a quick summary of if you were... If I'll ask it directly. If I'm interested, I myself will be interested in doing this. What is, 
one way you can summarize convincing me to become a living organ donor, Diane? Well, I, uh, I just the fact that I, it will make you feel so wonderful to, to know that you've saved a life or made someone's life immensely better. Okay, and Robin? Mm -hmm. I think um, just um, to to remember that um, you're you're basically never too old. We're, we're both in our sixties, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and um, it it hasn't um, it it um, hasn't changed our functioning w one bit. Mm -hmm. uh, if if you do um, it, you feel called to to donate a, a kidney, if something ever happened, say you were in a car accident and your one remaining kidney was was damaged. You automatically go to the top of the list um, if, if you ever need a transplant. But I, I, I'll say that the, the testing that you go through, they absolutely ensure that, um, that you um, are, are a, a, a strong candidate and um, they they're take great pains in, in uh, protecting your own, um, that the health of, um, uh, and well-being of donors. Thank you both. Um, and, and to our listeners, a reminder that April is National Donate Life Month, which began in the year 2003. And during the month of April, we encourage all Americans to register as organ, eye, and tissue donors, both as living donors, but also as donors whose organs may be gifted to others after you pass on. Um, multiple ways of doing that and registering to become a donor. And uh, Diane Mack and Robin Gilmartin will be here at Middlesex Community College's main campus on April 19th from 11 to 1 mm -hmm. outside Correct. our cafeteria to provide information to sign up donors. I, I thank you for joining me today on Middlesex Moments. Hey, oh, thanks thank so you, much. Steve. Our pleasure. Thanks. And for you, our listeners, thank you for joining us for another edition of Middlesex Moments. Uh, we invite you to come April 19th to visit Robin and Diane or at any time to come to our main campus at 100 Training Hill Road in Middletown. We also invite you to visit us at our Meriden Center, now located at Platt High School, 220 Co. Avenue in the city of Meriden, where we offer afternoon and evening classes four days a week. And of course, you can visit us online 24-7 at mxcc.edu. For everyone here at Middlesex Community College, I'm Steve Minkler, and we hope to see you again soon.